How's it going everyone? Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Instead of you guys having to put up with the boring interiors of my car, I thought I'd try and uh, shoot the video while doing a bit of a morning walk just as the sun's coming up. It's been an early start, I've already been to the gym, um, but because uh, summer's coming to an end, the sun's starting to come up a bit later and later. So it's, you know, it uh, gives me an, another opportunity to go for a little walk just before the kids get up. So it's really good. Anyway, um, Mullen Automotive, another sort of Lackluster session, we're down about 3% on no real news at all. Uh, it continues on from yesterday's slide of 2%. Now, in terms of the charts that we've been following on here, that actually means that we're technically now uh, in a downward trend, um, at least on this uh, recent trading data. So, you know, not what we want to see uh, for as Mullen shareholders, but I guess we're kind of used to this from the company by now. Um, in terms of what Mullen needs to do to turn it around, we've said it a million times, uh, they need to be starting to book more meaningful sales. They need to, you know, show some significant updates on, I think particularly um, the Bollinger vehicles. That's kind of seems to be the next big, big uh, move from the company is getting the, the Bollinger vehicles to market. And there's supposedly um, quite a few reservations there. Like I think somewhere in the, the tens of thousands. I, I can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head. If you remember, drop it in the comments. Um, yeah, so we need to see something happening there. Um, I don't think we're going to get much progress for the stock in terms of if there is any update around other vehicles that Mullen has in the pipeline. Just because, you know, any sort of vehicle that's being developed by Mullen or any other EV company is very capital intensive. And that's the biggest problem that Mullen has at the moment. They're just burning through whatever money they have and then they're raising more money and then they're having to enact reverse stock splits galore just to try to keep the stock um, you know, compliant with the NASDAQ just so they can keep doing the same vicious cycle of shareholder erosion. Uh, pointed out yesterday in the video that uh, there is a statement on their website saying that they represent great value investment uh, with, you know, for investors. And I've <laughs> uh, got a bit of a response to say, and clearly a lot of you are thinking along the same lines as me that, yeah, that's just a bit of a, a, bit of a joke. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, not a great day for Mullen, but you know, not many of them are, I suppose. Uh, you know, I'm still hopeful that, you know, this company could become something more later on, but I really am just reiterating the same same point I've made all along. Like, I, I wouldn't be looking to put more money in Mullen Automotive at the moment. Uh, if you use it for a short-term trading opportunity, maybe, but you know, even looking at some of the trends that we've been following on here in recent weeks, or I shouldn't say recent weeks, in the last week or so, um, you know, they're not even that predictable, you know, Mullen Automotive doesn't necessarily buck trends, uh, follow trends except a downward one. Um, you know, the only way you'd be making money on Mullen Automotive in the short term trading, I think, and more consistently, is if you're shorting it. And, you know, as a person who's in the stock long, at least at the moment, uh, I hate you. <laughs> no, I don't hate you. Um, you got to make money how you want to make money. I like looking at Mullen. It's an interesting company. It's like interesting seeing a company. Um, you know, develop and come to market with, with vehicles and just seeing a lot of things that can go wrong for a company in capital markets. And, you know, honestly, I think it's a bit of a learning experience. Obviously, for some, it's not a learning experience. It's potentially life-ruining. I've heard some of the comments what people have invested in Mullen and seen destroyed, and that's like, that's really sad. I really, you know, really feel for people like that. Um, but I guess, you know, like, that's the risk you take when you get into markets, isn't it? there's a chance that you're going to lose a lot of money. And Mullen Automotive is one of those companies that have lost a lot of money. Um, if you want to talk about losing a lot of money, you could actually look at David Mitri because as the biggest shareholder, <laughs> he's seen a lot of erosion in shareholder value, but the only difference is that he's able to give himself stupid amounts of shares for doing virtually nothing of value for investors. So, but still at the same time, while he's been giving himself a lot of money, he's technically been losing a lot of money as well. It's a vicious cycle. It's like double taxation from the government, but at a corporate level of for investor value, investor monies. Anyway, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, share your thoughts on Mullen. Do you know anything coming up with the stock? I saw someone put an interesting price prediction thing. It's gonna to go to $18 next week. Not, not in my books. I think we're a, a long shot. It's gonna take any sort of movement. It's gonna be a slow, steady climb. Um, and this is something really juicy that comes in the pipeline. Mullen has the potential to jump up a lot, but with the looming prospect of another equity raising that's going to severely dilute shareholders, I don't see anything propping the stock up to that point. Anyway, 
I'll leave it at that. Until next time, everyone, may the markets trade in your favour. Cheers.